So guys, um, I'm getting ready. We're gonna do a quick video here. Uh, normally I would do this outside. Two reasons, I have been sick all night. Um, I've been up since up and down all night. Uh, I caught something and I've got, I guess, some pretty, pretty bad uh, intestinal problems going on right now. So there's probably gonna be some cuts and pauses in this. I don't, I don't feel bad. I had a fever and stuff last night, but today I've just got the headache and really, really, really bad diarrhea. So I'm gonna get this video shot real quick. The other reason we're not doing it outside is, well, hang on a second, I'll show you. So this is the other reason, guys. This is my new canopy. I had to put it down uh, as low as I could get it because it's been so windy the last couple days that this thing already, like it honestly tried to take off. So as you can see, all my stuff's under there. The wind has not been as bad today. Tomorrow I have a lot of sharpening to do. So there'll probably be a live feed tomorrow, but I've got to get that canopy lifted back up so that I can get up underneath it. So guys, what we are going to talk about, and hopefully I can get this video done. Let me get this lens cleaned off. Well, you know me, I'm not gonna stop just because I got a dirty optic. I'm just gonna wipe it off. Um, so what we're gonna talk about is something that I owned before. I had the, this is a Shiragarov Hati. This one is in G10. This is, I had one of these. I had one of these in carbon fiber and I think I paid I think I paid a thousand dollars almost for mine. These are eight seventy nine right now on uh, eight seventy nine, eight seventy five, something like that on KnifeCenter.com. So this is a very nice example of a very nice knife. I just, for the price I had paid for this knife, I didn't see that it was so much better than other knives that I had started getting and seeing. I got this knife and I had this knife the same time I had a Decepticon too. And you guys have heard me talk about knives that pushed, I did a video talking about knives that pushed my high-end custom and high-end production knives, like the, the really high-end mid-tech stuff, the out of, they pushed them out. I just don't have, I didn't have them and I didn't see that they were that much better. The problem was with this being as much as I paid for it, I was weary of using my Hati. Now, I am gonna tell you that these things are nice and I had forgotten how nice it was until this one came in for sharpening. I hadn't seen one in a while. So this is an older one, G10. This one's older, this was in LMAX and it rides on washers. Now, I looked on Amazon, the green G10 one, or not Amazon, I'm sorry, Blade HQ. Uh, knife center. The one that they had for like $8.75 still is listed as a washer pivot. I do know that there are some, I think, that are on bearings, but this runs on washers. Now, I didn't take this apart. It's not my knife. Um, it didn't need it. I was able to keep it clean enough that I didn't have to take it apart and clean out any grit of the pivot. The nice thing about it, uh, that's one of the nice things about it. These things are so smooth. Now, this doesn't just drop closed. You have to do that a couple times. But when you feel absolutely zero resistance, it's as smooth, consistently smooth through that travel and hydraulic action as a Sebenza. And that's what the action on this feels like when you just open and close it with your fingers as opposed to using the flipper tab. If this had a thumb stud, this would have the same feel through the travel of the blade as a Sebenza. So, I mean, they're, they're smooth. This is in LMAX. This, like I've said before, LMAX is one of my favorite steels. This knife takes a wicked, stupid sharp edge. And with the full flat grind that they do on these, it comes down and is so thin behind the edge that it gets amazing sharp. It really does. Uh, really comfortable in hand. The blade shape, the blade shape on these is something that I really liked and I couldn't put my finger on what it was about the the uh, Ferrum Forge Stinger, the original, the small one that I liked so much. They share a kind of same blade shape, blade style uh, on these as the, those small stingers that were done in SM100 that I like so much. The, the blade is pretty, you know, the finger toil and everything, there's, there's some definite differences, but the the overall shape of the blade is very similar, and that's 
part of what I think I like about the Stinger so much. So this came in from a guy named Christopher. I've had his knife for a while. I have been trying to get around to the video between being busy and being sick on and off for the last couple weeks. Um, I haven't got around to it. So his knife has been sitting here for quite a while, but he's out of the country. Uh, I actually texted with him this morning. I am going to ship this uh, out so that it's there when he gets back, but I definitely wanted to do a video. Now, this is the first Hati video I've ever done on the channel. Uh, I don't think it'll be the last. It's just the first one that has come in in a very long time. Um, in my very first video, you heard me talk about the Shiragoro of Hati that I had, the carbon fiber one, and I had the Decepticon too. Those are both very expensive knives. But they just, this one was, this one was good. It was just the price I'd paid for it. The Decepticon 2 was a matter of, it just wasn't what I thought I wanted because I'd never gotten to handle one. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna turn this camera around. We'll get some, we'll try and get, lighting's bad. I'm sorry, I apologize. This isn't gonna be the best video. I just, I, I wanna get it done. But I also know that this needs to go back out. He's not pressuring me. I mean, he's still out of the country, but it would be nice to have this back to him before he goes home, gets home. So, all right, guys, let me get this turned around, and we'll take a good look at this from the back side. All right, guys, I'm hoping that the lighting will be a little bit better, better on this. So these, uh, the one I had, too, came, um, I, if I remember right, because it's been a long time. Uh, it's been at least two, three years since I sold it. It had the, on the G10, it had this same milling pattern, if I remember correctly. Backspacer on this is also G10, titanium scales. There is a thing about this that I had forgotten that I did not like, and I'm going to point it out to you guys. The hardware is just that slot uh, screw like that. Really, you know, really simple, really easy. Really nice stone wash on this. The pocket clip on this was the only issue I ever really had on it because it had that sharp point right there. Um, it just, it felt really sharp on that point, and had I been smart about it, I could have just smoothed that off a little bit. Um, but it, just that one little point right there, mine had that same little point right there, and it's just a little sharp, a little hot spot. Not so much when you're using it, but just so much like more along the lines of it catches on things, it, it digs into stuff, you know, it scratches things, it scratched the crap out of the steering wheel. I have a, a leather steering wheel on my car and it just scratched the crap out of it. But like I said, it is green olive drab G10. Action on it is really nice. The blade was had zero scratches or anything. You see, I took it and I put a really nice mirror polish on it. It's got fingerprints and stuff on it. LMAX blade markings on it, the Shure Garage markings. Now, one of the things about this though, that I do, you hear that? You just, there's still some blade stick, some lock stick, which isn't a big deal, but what my concern is, you see here, yeah, I zoomed in. I can do some stuff. You see the size of the, you have your lock bar insert, which is supposed to be able to allow you to some walk over. But the problem I'm seeing is this will only walk over so far before that titanium hits against the side of the blade, which kind of defeats the purpose of having enough room for travel for that blade to work its way over and, and lengthen the life of the blade. Now, if you look here, you can see where that is. I mean, it's basically traveled halfway over. Not quite. I think that's because you can actually push on a little bit. And I think someone has, you know, when you use it, you squeeze it and that lock bar slides in. Now that does give you better lock up. Let me zoom back out. That, that, I mean, that's one of the things that naturally happens with a frame lock is as you're using it and you squeeze and you're using it, you're pushing that lock bar in a little bit. But the problem you're gonna have is, as these two wear, you're gonna run into a problem where that no longer is a good marriage point and you're gonna get some blade play. A little bit of fucking lock, lock rock. So this knife obviously has not been carried or used a lot because you can see right here, there's really not much as far as wear on the stop pin. There's no, there's no real significant sides of wear or use on this knife, period. So this is a really good example, and this is an older one. Uh, Christopher said he's had it for a while. Um, the other thing that irritated the crap out of me, I wanted to put a lanyard on this knife. Back then, I had, I had some knives that I wanted to put lanyards on. If you look, your lanyard hole is down inside. 
you've got to have a pretty thin piece of line that you're pushing down in there to try and get it through that lanyard hole. Either that or you got to take the knife apart, put your lanyard on it, and then put it back together. So mine didn't have a lanyard. I wanted to put a lanyard on it. I noticed that it was giving me all kinds of problems. Um, these knives are really nice and light, and uh, we're going to get, I'll show you that too. You can see in here, they milled out the titanium. It's been milled out for for lightning. And I mean, it is light. It is a light knife. So all in all, these, I mean, these are really comfortable knives. The finger, uh, there's no real hot spots on it at all. There's the, even that, that high point on right there, that sharp point right there. Even that, for as much as it bothered me, in hand is not a hot spot. It really isn't. There's no hot spots on these. Um, and they are. They're really attractive. I wish it had a bit more of a choil coming up, but the fact is that these are ground well enough that you can get that point right here is every bit as sharp as the rest of the blade. And like I said, they do get ridiculous sharp. I've got to clean this up and wipe it down before I send it back to Christopher. But yeah, let me get the let me get the, com the camera turned back around and we'll uh, we'll close this out. So yeah, guys, that's it. The Shirogorov Hati. Awesome, awesome knife. Just at the price point that I paid for it, it was not. It, it wound up turning almost into a safe clean, just like my Decepticon 2. Decepticon 2 went in the safe because um, it's just not something that I really, it's not what I thought I wanted. I thought I wanted it, and when it came, I got it, and I was like, ah, yeah, you know, I. it was attractive and everything, but it's it's just not something that that wound up being something I would carry. So it stayed in the safe, and then the price on this one is what put it in the safe. Now, I will tell you, in my pocket, I am not going to lie to you guys, and it's not just because I'm friends with the Fair and Forge guys. These knives that have been coming out through Mass Drop, as much as people dislike some of the the uh, the Mass Drop, I'm trying to clean it off so maybe we can see the marking on it, the, the Mass Drop logo that's on some of these knives, people complain about it. These knives and these knives they're comparable. And that's the that's the nice thing about the way the knife market has went in the last year or so. I can get a knife at $79. And I'm, when I'm saying comparable, I'm saying comparable in how it feel and use. Um, quality steel, quality steel, quality action, quality action, quality materials, and the way it feels in hand. And the only thing, I this is a little thicker blade grind but it's a lot thinner blade. We've gotten to a point where you can get a knife, and I'm not saying a knife that's as good. When I say comparable, I'm saying it's it's not at 70 bucks now. You're not getting the crap that you used to get at 70 and 80 bucks. These were $79. Now, these are $800. Now, I get it. These are a lot more handmade than this, but what I'm saying is the knife world has gotten to a point where now you can go out and you can get... There's some twenty to fifty dollar knives out there that would fit the bill for ninety percent of the people in the world. I have a tendency to like nicer, nicer knives. There's certain things I want in a knife, and some of it is aesthetics, and some of it are other things. But in the knife market, we've gotten to a point where at eighty bucks, I mean, you could always get a nice knife at eighty bucks, um, but f at fifty bucks, let's put it that way, at fifty bucks, the Urban Trapper, which this reminds me a lot of, except the Urban Trapper had a big hot spot on the flipper tap. The Urban Trapper at 50 bucks is an amazing knife. That's the, that's that Boker, uh, Brad, uh, Brad Zinkler knife. And I don't like many of the Brad Zinkler designs. I did like that one. There's knives out there now that people are, are making and producing and doing well at a lower price point. And it's just allowing all of us knife enthusiasts, us knife nuts, to be able to, yeah, I can still get my eight and nine hundred dollar fucking artsy, cool, special, one of a kind knockoff or not knockoffs, one offs. I mean, but I don't always have. Like right now, I just started this business. I don't have that kind of money. It allows me to go and still have a really nice knife. Or uh, what's the other one that I? What's the other one that I've gotten uh, recently? Uh, that came in 
I can't think of it. I'll think of it and I'll put it in the next video when I because you know I'm going to keep talking about this stuff. But these Chinese companies that are doing some of this OEM work for American designed knives, they have opened up the market to us with quality, quality things that still meet what we want, but don't cost us an arm and a leg. And I think, I, I hate to say it, there are production knives that are being made and coming out that are way better quality than a lot of the customs. Um, I'm not going to lie. I just I just ground a knife for a guy, and I'm going to tell you, it has some inconsistencies, but it's a hand ground blade. That's what you get. You know, you, you get some things that people love those little idiosyncrasies of a hand ground, handmade knife. But there's also, you know, like I get upset. I can I can look at a custom handmade knife completely differently than I look at something that has a level of manufacturing that should be consistent. That's why I flip out about Benchmade and the problems that they have. Their, hand, their knives are not handmade. They're, they're, they're production. They are a full production knife. And every time I get one of these that's off center and then things like that, you know, I did the video, the live feed about the, the Life Sharp service. Those two knives that Nico sent out came back with the exact same issues. I'm not saying that, that Benchmades don't come sharp and things like that. What I'm saying is, if I send something back for warranty work and it comes back exactly the same as it was when it left, that tells me that they're just blowing smoke and they're not actually doing anything for me. So I don't want to get off on that tangent. Um, like and subscribe. Please, if you like my videos, please do like them. Uh, hit the like button because that's how they get forwarded off to people that are not my subscribers. Um, if you don't, if you subscribe and some of you guys said you're missing things, make sure you click on the bell and see that you're getting all notifications, not just some. That's one of the things that I think is happening is some people are complaining because they're not getting notified and they're only hitting some, sometimes get notified instead of always be notified for everything I do. I'm going to put a link down here in the bottom for uh, my Patreon if you guys choose to. I think I have gotten it figured out how to do uh, exclusive videos for my Patreon members. Um, I am going to try and make up a banner of some sorts where I can acknowledge all of my Patreons. Uh, it's just, it takes, I'm going to have to do it and then edit it in Photoshop and things like that. So, all right, you guys, you guys take it easy. Hopefully you guys don't feel as crappy as I do. Take it easy, be good to each other, and I'll see you next time.